let's discuss a simple but very popular react coding question that you may encounter in your next front end interview so the question says that we're supposed to create a like button whose appearance changes based on the following states so as you can see we have a default state which looks something like this when we hover on it it turns to red when we like it it fills the button completely but there's a catch over here every time we click on this default or liked button there's an api call that is made and when that api call is made this loading state has to be shown the heart and the spinner icon are provided for your convenience okay so they have already provided us with this um, heart and the spinner icons pre-made we don't need to build that so they've given us that in the button's default state when it's clicked it goes into loading state and a request is made to the provided backend api which has a 50 percent chance of succeeding or failing so we have to handle the error cases as well so if you scroll down, yep, there's that API that we're supposed to call and its parameters are going to be like or unlike depending on our action. And the API has a 50% chance of succeeding. So if it's success, it's going to give us the success message. If it's a failure, it's going to give us unknown error during the attempted action. So here's the like button that we're supposed to make. So if we click on it, you're going to see it did that loading state and it got converted into this liked state. If you click on it again, okay, let's try again. Okay, yeah, you can see the API failed and it gave us the error, error during attempted like, please try again later. Also, I'm going to tell you the best coding practices that you need to keep in mind while building an app like this in your React.js interviews, like best coding conventions, edge cases, variable naming, optimizations, etc. So by default, they've given us this UI with a heart icon and a spinner to use in our app. So obviously, we're going to render them conditionally with respect to if our API is fetching or not. So first of all, I'm going to create a state over here. I'm going to import use state from React. So use state gives us an array which contains two things. One is the variable which I'm going to name liked and the function to change that variable which I'm going to say set liked. So this is basically a state of our app which will manage the like and unlike state of our button. So I'm going to remove this code for now. And over here, with respect to our liked state, I'm going to render this. So if our button is liked, I'm going to show liked. Else, just like. Also, by default, we're supposed to give this variable a state as well. So I'm going to give it false. So it's going to show like. But what if this was true? Then it would have shown liked. And now if I add an on click over here, which calls a function handle like unlike. All this does is it sets the set liked to the opposite. So if it's true, then it's going to be false. If it's false, it's going to be true. So if I click on over here, yep, you see the button is changing its state. But wait, you might be thinking, what is this platform that I'm doing this question on? This looks like lead code, except it is for front end interview questions. So click the first link in the description down below and you will land on greatfrontend.com. Here you can find hundreds of frontend interview questions, whether they are JavaScript, React.js, frontend DSA questions, machine coding, system design, and even behavioral questions as well. And here, if I click on try a question and search like button and click on over here. Yep, you see, we have landed on this question. They have a plenty of free questions as well. So you should check it out before deciding to pay. I personally have subscribed to their lifetime plan so that I can have access to these questions whenever I like. So let's first of all go on and build the UI for our button. So I'm going to give this a class name of like btn. And I'm using backticks over here because I'm going to add a conditional classes later on. So first of all, I'm going to define some CSS variables for our colors. So if we see over here, they've given us two colors. So when the button is in its default state, it's going to be like grayish color, which is this one over here. And when it's active, it's going to be red. So I'm going to take two variables, default color and active color. Now for our like BTN class, it's going to have a border of two pixel solid. And I'm going to give it the default uh, color. Put the display to flex, align items to center so that everything is in the very center. Let me just close this up. Gap is going to be 8 pixels. I'm going to give it some border radius of 32 pixels so that it's round on the sides. Cursor is obviously going to be pointer. Give it some font weight of bold. Some height 30 pixels. Padding of 4 pixels up down and 8 pixels left right. And you can see our button has started to take shape. 
that's giving some margin bottom of five pixels just to create some space below this button because we're going to display the error message below it then i'm going to give the color to this button it's going to be a default color and the background color is going to be white okay this looks good let's go back to app.js and when it's light i want it to be red right so okay i'm going to use our state over here of liked so i'll just use the template string if it's liked then show this class else show nothing so i'm going to show liked class over here let's go on and style this up before that i want some hover styles on this like btn so hover and simply on hover i'm going to change the color of our button and the border of our button so the border color will be the active color and the color of our button will also be the active color so if we hover on it yep you see it's starting to look like our requirements now when we click on it it's on the liked state let's give the styles to this liked state now so if it's liked it's gonna have some background color of active color the border color will also be the active color and the color of our text is going to be white but you can see when we hover on this button there's some issue so what i'll simply do on hover state as well i'll keep the same settings so hover so now the same styles will be applied on the hover state as well awesome all right now let's add the ability to fetch the result from our api and display the result accordingly so okay let's see so in the requirements we've been given this api over here which is a post api so let me just close it i'm just gonna keep it right over here commented out now here i'm gonna create two states if you're preparing for your front-end interview and you would like me to help you in your front-end interview preparation just click the link in the description down below and book a one-on-one -on -one call with me we're gonna discuss tips tricks i'm gonna give you a lot of resources i'm gonna design a proper roadmap tailored to your situation which is going to help you out a lot in your front-end interview preparation so click the link in the description down below and book a one-on-one -on -one call with me first one is going to manage our fetching so is fetching is going to be true when our api is being fetched and the other one is going to be the error state which is going to manage our error and display it in our ui so inside of this handle like unlike function first of all i'm going to set is fetching to true because our data fetching from the api has started and i'm going to set the error at this point to null after this i'm going to create a try block i'm going to say const response and inside of this i'm going to make the api call so await fetch and it's going to get this url the api endpoint now inside of this object it's going to take things like method headers and the body of our uh, api payload so okay so method as we saw already is going to be post it's, uh, it's a post request and headers we're gonna send content type application slash json which basically means that we're sending the data in format of an object and then the third thing is going to be the body so the body will take uh, this thing the action keyword which will either be like or unlike depending on our action but i'm going to send this data in form of a string so json dot stringify and this will have action to be if it's liked so based on this state over here this like if it's liked already then obviously we're going to unlike it right so unlike else like okay this should be good enough but since we're using this await keyword over here we need to make this function an asynchronous function now after this also what's the issue over here catch or finally expected okay so either we're supposed to write catch over here or finally but we're gonna handle our error inside of this try block so i'm gonna add finally block over here and inside of this finally uh, if as you already know that this finally block is going to run doesn't matter if this try block succeeds or fails so instead of finally i'm gonna set is fetching to false now let's see if we are getting some response inside of this so console.log response first of all let's click on this button and open the console yep we're getting some response and yeah obviously this is uh, not been formatted yet so i'll say response dot json let's see now if we click on this again and yep you see we get this message over here error during attempted and unlike okay let's try to click on it again 
and yep now you see it has succeeded okay cool so let's go on and first handle our error so if response dot status is more than or equal to 200 if the response of our api is 200 so as you may already know there's a status for our uh, api's response so if it's 200 then it's fine if it's 300 then it's fine if it's 400 then it's a front end error if it's 500 then it's a back end error so okay if the response dot status is more than or equals to 200 and response dot status is less than 300 that is if everything works fine then i'm gonna do this else we're gonna set the error over here so const response equals response dot json await and whatever response that we get i'm gonna set the error to that so response dot then i'm gonna say return okay let's see what happens if i click on like yep we get this message success if we click on it again cool let's try to click on it until it fails i think now it would have failed but it's not showing over here because okay it's not reaching this code so okay i'll just uh, put it over here now if i try to do it again okay yeah you see error during attempted unlike awesome so let's remove this and since we have set our error let's go on and use this uh, error and display it so below this button i'm gonna say if error exists and so I'm gonna add a div inside of this div. I'm gonna render this error message. All right, let's try to like, yep, you see, error during attempted live. We're also going to style this a uh, little bit as well. But uh, one more thing that we need to take care of is the fetching state. So when this is being fetched, so if is fetching is true, so what I'll do, I'll just add a curly brace over here. If is fetching is true, you remember we have this spinner icon as well so i'll just display the spinner icon else it's going to be the heart icon let's try it again okay cool let's try it again All right i think this is the expected behavior but let me just first style this uh, error a little bit simply going to give this some font size of 12 pixels and i forgot to give this the class name so class name equals error Yep, that looks uh, much better. Okay, so this is good enough for our app, but we need to also think of the edge cases when we are doing these questions in our machine coding interviews or React interviews. So the edge case over here could be that user could click on this like button more than once when it's being already fetched, right? Like something like this. They can click on this more than once and this could, you know, see, even though we got the uh, success message, but since the user made multiple different requests, one of the requests may be, got failed that's why we get this error message as well so to tackle this while this is being fetched what i'll do is i'll disable the button inside of our button let me just keep it down here i'll just say disabled and i'll give this is fetching so if it is fetching is true then the button will be disabled so now if you click on it multiple times it will only make one request at one time. Let me show you properly. So over here, I've opened this network tab and if you click on this like button, yep, you see it made a request and that request was failed. And we get the response as a rep attempt during the like. If you click on it again, it succeeded. And yep, don't worry about this, it's a pre-flight request. This is the main request. So message was success. And but if I remove this disabled over here, then you're gonna see. Now, if I click on this again and again and again, you're going to see it made so many requests. So that is why this disabled is fetching edge case is very important over here. So yep, that is it for this video. Check out Great Frontend by clicking the first link in the description down below. And also, if you would like to see more such videos like this, just click this card above my head and you will access the complete playlist.